Hey guys, how are you? It is the debrief live uh, from round number five of the uh, Supercarts USA Pro Tour. Uh, welcome to hashtag Groundhog Day. Hashtag uh, Situation Saturday. It is Situation Saturday, but it's Groundhog Day as well. We keep waking up in the same place. We keep going to the same racetrack. We keep having the same races. Let me jump yeah. over here to the comments. Make sure the comments are rocking here right now. No, it's not technically the same races. I mean, we're saying <laughs> some of the same winners, but it's the same format, same structure. And we wake up in the same beds, and we eat the we same do. breakfast, and then we go drive to the racetrack. And say, I do that already <laughs> day to day. So I mean, that's very true. Uh, it, it was a pretty great day today, all in all. Hello to all of you, those of you who are tuned in right now. Thank you so much for joining us. We went to Los Amigos for uh, Mexican dinner. It was delicious. It was. You were happy. I got what I wanted, and that's always good. You had steak tacos, and you were happy. Uh, it was good. So, yeah, day was pretty solid on the racetrack. A lot of great racing. I actually have results here, and because uh, Matt Langford told us that we screwed up uh, the race big time, we actually have some notes. I wasted, that's not a waste of time. I took time off from announcing to make sure I had a couple of notes and wanted to screw things up. Uh, again, if you are tuning in right now and you have any questions, Please blast them out there, comments, whatever it may be. Interactive. It's better for us if it's interactive. The reason why I'm saying this right now, and the reason why Cole is not looking at the camera, is because he's actually working on his spreadsheet. Uh, those of you who may not know, when I hired David, it, he did, had absolutely zero skills whatsoever to be in the job he is right now. Oh he wasn't a journalist, didn't know how to write, oh. uh, couldn't talk on the radio. Yeah. Um, he liked go-kart racing. That was you, did, you did have a couple of things right. What's that? That I like racing. You like racing, race karting. Yeah, and yeah. You had no idea how to write. I had no idea. No, but you actually had written a couple. But you started writing road racing articles for us. They were horrible. I edited them, but you were. But they were three hundred words. Yeah, and you were emotional and, and supportive of the sport, which was yeah. great. So, but you've become a fantastic writer. And but here's the thing where I'm going with this was, but it's a, those of you who may not know, David has actually a degree in. Mathematics. Up, no, hold on. Applied mathematics. Applied math, meaning yeah, bachelor's of science. Yeah. Applied mathematics. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It was a C average, but I, I <laughs> doesn't I matter. I grad. It took me five and a half years, but I graduated. But the thing that David can do, which is ridiculously awesome, is spreadsheets. He's a spreadsheet king. And uh, listen, we have the EK. The numbers right. back up my spark plug thing. <laughs> they do not do that. Okay, don't do that. I will say this: I will. Ne I would never sell. The spreadsheet that David, because I had started the initial spreadsheet for the EK driver rankings, and I loved it. David took it to the next level, of course. It's not something that we will ever let anybody see, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll never sell it because it's a very uh, complicated. serious, complicated spreadsheet for sure. Uh, okay, uh, Kyle Kalish says, what changed? I guess you talk about David not knowing things. That I agree wow. with. Wow. Uh, coming, coming from a guy who there, doesn't and, race anymore. And it's nothing about Merlin. Speaking of not racing, Tommy Anderson, there's a bunch, a bunch of uh, Merlin guys coming at you. How would you grade the overall race craft over the last couple of weekends? Um, yeah, let's, let's ask a couple questions. Let's jump right at them real quick. Uh, I'm going to say race craft pretty solid. I think we know that uh, Newcastle – Lends itself to people getting over aggressive because you can drive a guy. Th you can drive a guy through corners. Tommy, you've been here before. Kyle, you've raced here. You can always drive a guy through a hairpin, and I don't think we saw a lot of that because I think because the class is so close. If you try to drive somebody through, you end up getting rolled and coming into the, in, into the back, which uh, uh, I get I get pushed back. We've seen drivers go, especially here in Reverse National, coming through the the, uh, the I-70 hairpin, pushing too hard. You drop a wheel there, Dave. We're talking. 10, 15, back of the pack kind of stuff, right? You lose a lot of positions for sure. Well, the pushback bumper certainly helps with the start, so we got that. But, yeah, I mean, it's Newcastle. Guys are very familiar with the racetrack. Yeah. Obviously, except for, yeah, obviously this weekend because we're going reverse national, but it's essentially the same racetrack. You're just going through the entry on what used to be the exit of the corner. So the lines are all the same. Um, I mean – I think overall the racecraft has been good. I mean, you're going to, nothing's going to be perfect, especially in racing. Yeah. You know, oh, come on. You know, we, we have our perfect score go away in, in G2. We'll talk about that later, but yeah. nothing is ever perfect. And, well, and, and, and racecraft, racecraft don't take yourself so far that you have emotion and, and the actual. A lot, and there's a lot of emotion. I mean, as, yeah. we, as you just said, it's Groundhog's Day, essentially, every day that we've been here. These guys are all getting really aggressive. And now. so, yeah, it, it, it tends to start wearing on you mentally. Well, there's good, there's good Amy race, is not perfect. But there's good racecraft, but you push sometimes. There is, yeah. Sometimes you're going to push to make a pass, and it may not be a great racecraft, but you're rolling the dice on it, right? Bottom and again, line. so but there is a guy that's perfect. And he's not perfect. Andy Saisman. Andy is not perfect. No. 
So he's not. He's not. Can he be? A, oh well, they're done racing. Yeah, so, they're done. so he's probably. So again, racecraft has been. I, I thought has been awesome. Listen, let's know that the racecraft in the front half of the grid sometimes better than the back half. Sometimes the other way around. But is that racecraft or is that talent? Well, well we, or an experience. Well, ex experience is racecraft, right? We talked about a couple of drivers. I mentioned if you if you watched uh, some of the stuff I, I talked uh, or listened to some of the broadcasts, I talked about some of the drivers who maybe lacked a bit of racecraft in terms of not knowing where to be uh, over the last couple of laps. Some drivers, you know, just got themselves into positions where they were trying to make a pass, but making that pass, they end up going back like nine spots. And there's just you know, again, you have to time it, time it at this particular track, uh, knowing who's behind you. Now, the reason why I said David was so good at the spreadsheets. Is because he is now, of course, working as he does every time we do an event with Ecan Trackside Live. Uh, he's working on the spreadsheets to know how we're going into tomorrow. And the spreadsheet's pretty serious uh, in terms of it's massive. He, he knows he is. He knows he's, he's got everything done with with drops, blah 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 blah. Where you're running on the racetrack, he plugs in fast laps of the race every time, and that's the key, I think. Um, I like listen. You know what? This is interesting. That that uh, that uh, we're let's give a run. Thanks for the comments, by the way. Uh, Andy Sazman said fatigue probably a huge part of day eleven. Um, I think we're are we in day nine right now. Whatever we're in, uh, Andy. Very. <laughs> we don't. We don't Groundhog know. Day. Tell us what day it is. <laughs> Here on the eight times, eight, a thousand times through February the, the <laughs> second or whatever Groundhog Day is. But that's something that somebody actually said to us early. Somebody told us that they didn't think that that there would be drivers in the single speed categories and senior that may be able to make it to the very end of the weekend, all three races, because you have to pound the curbs in a couple of places here. Uh, and we've talked to drivers where, man, they're tired and not, not just physically tired, but mentally tired uh, after the entire run. Um, oh, here we go. Judy Aladia said, do you see my oldest son today? Yes, of course. We did. Yes. We, yeah. We talked, we talked football. You did. Me and him, I didn't me that. and Michael talked football. Right. We talked about how terrible the Big 12 is and, and the SEC is compared to the Big 10. So. I, I will say this. Uh, Papa Lavia said that if I ask for one of the ratio rights, I can get one. <laughs> I'm asking for a ratio right. I want a mini ratio right. Uh, Derek Escabel, Escabel says, Escabel. Uh, looks like a stack field, an X30 senior who's looking good going into tomorrow. I don't like Derek, honest to God, how do you, how do you not – think the price of Morris is going to do it again. The guy's been ridiculously good. We'll get to that, of course, guys. And the reason why I say this, because we're, when we do the, 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 the breakdown of categories, David's going to line us up with trying, right. trying to line us up right now because he, he was dicking around over here while we, after we had showers over the dinner. Well, I can't wait for you to get them all done, David. We're not going to do this at 11 o'clock at night. I need to sleep pretty soon. I need Rob, to, never mind. I, I need my beauty sleep. I, I, was, I was going to say what we heard on the, uh, the stand-up. I was going to say it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't, no, don't, and I can't say that. that. No, no, I can't no. say that. But we watched some Netflix stand up a couple days ago. Can we say his name? Oh, Andy Saisman signing off. What are you signing off for? He was he was Andy Saisman type. Having a red cup with Eric and Josh. Yeah. And Kelsey, yeah good for you guys. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. Um, Angry Elf. Carl Lewis, are people running out of parts like <laughs> motors and bent chassis? No, I really haven't heard anything about that. I don't think we got a lot of that stuff, well, Carl. You got Comet Cart Sales here. They have pretty much every that's type true. of brand that's that you true. have. That's true. Yeah. Uh, so that, you know, I mean, yeah. Most of the teams have parts stacked or stocked, ready to go. But yeah, I mean, I've had I've heard no issues. We haven't really talked to any of the engine builders regarding you know um, maintenance and because engines are being tore down uh, in tech. So that is um, that's maybe something we can ask engine builders. We well, that's a really good point. All like, the builders are here. They're taking care of their, I mean, their customers. Right? Gary Lawson is pretty much in the tech building from and 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 Wilcher. <laughs> And uh, I don't, sorry. as I'm working, I think I've seen the back of Gary Lawson about 18 times. Every time I look, because we're, we're on top of tech, right? Yeah. Every time I look back down, Gary's walking in the other direction. Yeah. Like he keeps coming to tech. His comment is having a great weekend. And then, along with Walter, Walter, uh, Allison, uh, Precision, Allison, Precision, BB, 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 uh, BBS, right? Yeah, BBS. BBS. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah. Not too many shifters because there's only one category. That's so true. we're not really sure who's in there for that. But. Oh, sweet tech, sweet tech here and stuff like that. Eddie Alavia, Robin Day, PME. Yes, I'm doing it. That's it. That's going to my, my, the, the ratio rights going to be my new cocktail, I think, my, my new drink of choice or my carrier, my chalice of choice. The chalice you have chosen wisely. wisely. Tom Harleman. Uh, corner worker. Gary Lawson is, 
is awesome. Tom, of course, one of the drivers that we raced with at the uh, at the Battle of the Brickyard, uh, a race winner earlier this year in the KRA program here, and uh, is working on the corner this weekend, which I think is fantastic. I love it. You know, uh, more more racers need to do that. I, I think. I think. I would I, love to hear his experience because he's probably never worked a corner before. That's true. Right. That's true. And as a young lad. I used to work corners before I even. Race. I did with my first year. Like you put the cart down, you roll out, you do a corner, you run back. It just kind of helps you understand the the chaos that is part of being a, a, at a race and doing the on track activities. Agreed. You know, race directing and corner working and stuff, the things that go on there. Okay, Brian Mossman says something nice to before. He says, "Thanks, guys, for the positive shots for Frankie tomorrow. He is coming in hot." I will tell you this, Brian. Yeah, it was Frankie that made me talk about him because if he's not in the front, I don't talk about him. It's a simple set, right? Like this is the driver. He says, though, where are the cocktails? Uh, it's an IPA for Rob, uh, uh, hazy, and you're rum and coke, David. Every time, like just it's a, it's a straight up deal. Jody Holden says, "You guys are my favorite." Well, you're our favorite well, too, Jody. Well, we love that. Well, uh, Dave and and, Dave, and he says, Dave, do you want to have a water burger and media logo on your photo lens? Oh, yeah. no, do you still I have it? Still it have it. Yes, I saw it today. When I shoot the podiums, I, Michael made sure I still had that uh, yeah. that uh, sticker on there. It's still, it's awesome. So today. when I shoot the podiums, it's on the podium one. And it makes me want a green chili cheeseburger. It I makes me want In and Out burger. Wow, that's a little blow for having that on there. All right, so let's jump into this thing right now, folks. Comments keep them coming. Uh, David's working on the uh, spreadsheet, so he'll be able to kind of bring us in on terms of where everybody is uh, uh, point-wise coming into the weekend. Uh, K100 Jr., uh, let me go back to my notes because I don't want to screw this up. Uh, again, it was Cruz, Burke, and the, actually the 877, uh, which was – I wrote the numbers down thinking that would be a good idea. And that was <laughs> stupid. I don't know the damn numbers of the cards. Who's the 877? I don't know. It's like, yeah, there's, no, there's not even one in there. Anyways, Cruz and Burke pulled away. It was yeah, that's, well, that's Cruz led. So bad. Well, Cruz led the majority of the race. So looking at my notes, Rob, just to let you know. <laughs> was it a Polsky? Why is he 802? He is 802. God damn it, Rob. You but Cruz so led the majority of the race. <laughs> um, there was some contact. Final circuit. Do you have that on your notes? I had. I had. Yeah. So my my notes was Cruz defends on final lap, and that really that was. Uh, and Burke tried it in in thirteen and fourteen. That was the thing. So come. We talked about this a lot, right? I said this before. Uh, either the cell phone, cell, the, the cell tower corner, or the next one, the double apex left hand. I thought that's where the passes were going to be because I, I thought that defending into 12, 13, 14 would be pretty easy. Uh, we saw some passes there. It, they had to be super aggressive. Uh, Cruz defends on the final lap into 14. Uh, Burke couldn't make the pass happen and, and went for it. And then I also said that, that work, I had my notes are that Workman and Morgan made contact coming out of turn number nine. Yeah, out of the cell tower. And yeah, and they dropped, and they, they, got, to, they got together and, and came out of the top ten. So, because Weston Workman, and, and Weston Workman worked his way up there. I, I honestly thought that Carson Morgan's, to me, Earl, as, they, as they kind of rolled in there, I kind of figured out that those guys were going to be, Morgan was going to be a guy in the, in the hunt because it just seemed to me like he was just real relaxed, real comfortable. And I thought he was going to be able to place himself where he needed. He was, he yeah. was, and, it, it, and it, we thought it was going to be a little bit more of a chaotic en ending. It was, but there was only three drivers yeah. rather than having five. Yeah. Uh, I, again, Cruz uh, worked his way to the front and then uh, and then and then defended, which is what you do. Like I like I said, uh, and my thought was when you come out of eleven, if you come out of eleven with the lead, it's almost going to be impossible to pass somebody. Even if you go to the you know down to the inside and turn twelve, which is the right hander enough. Even the over under over under, somebody's got to be absolutely perfect and real aggressive to get by you. And and Cruz always is so solid with his cart placement. That's one thing I like about him. He, he just places the cart at the right place. If he thinks he needs to roll a little outside, he'll roll a little outside. If it needs to be tighter, he'll do that. He ends up with the race win and and the David the fast lap of the race. John Burke coming home in second. And I think for Burke, likely because you're going to pull your points up. I don't think. I think I'm hoping the Burke had his head. Well, I'm good because I. It's not. Oh, Mathematically, unofficially, again, it's not. He doesn't have it yet. It's if you were to factor in the drop, he does not have it mathematically clinched. All right, listen, you go. Come on, so man. It's, it's uh, three hundred and three points. So three hundred and twenty points is a perfect score. Thus, uh, not a clinched. So if Burke was a Mexican tonight and got like serious <laughs> food poisoning, food poisoning. <laughs> Oh, great. Yeah, we went to Mexican, too. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so 
So who's P two? Is it, you say it's got Morgan. Morgan, Morgan yeah. second. Wow. All right. But is it, what, what's the lead? Well, if you look at overall points, obviously it's uh, it's less than a hundred. But when you factor in a drop, a drop yeah. Um, you're talking 303 points that right. Burke is ahead. All right. so, so he's in pretty good shape. So he's in good shape, but it's not mathematically. If he much. qualifies in the poll, it's done, right? If he qualifies in the poll, yeah. it would be done because he go. keeps he keeps that those 10 points from, from himself, somebody else. From somebody else. From somebody so yeah. So there you go. Again, tomorrow, uh he'll he'll you know, obviously just go around, make some laps, don't do anything stupid, and it's essentially yours. So uh, the big thing about Burke, Big Brun, I wanted to throw this out here real quick just because I have this here. But this is what Burke needs to do, Dave. Burke needs to do this. He needs to stay in front. Jesus. Burke needs to stay in front of everybody in front of him. Oh, oh pardon me. Sorry, that, that's a picture of me um, really? being in front of David. Because yeah. uh, everybody wants to see that. At the Indianapolis. Shout Monster. out to uh, <laughs> Stephen out. Flat. Shout out to Stephen Flat. And shout out to Comet with, for our Comet Eagles. Along with. With um, Colton, this should be a T-shirt. Should be like a hashtag Beat no, David Cole T-shirt. Don't you think so? No. Well, I'm glad you're stalling with with antics like this. <laughs> Thanks. I'm, I'm only on K Senior right now. It's <laughs> a lot to do. I told you, if I'm done by midnight, it'll be a good night. You're doing a great job, David. And by the way, I want to throw this out there: racing for vets, folks. Um, a fantastic program. Uh, we did a podcast with them. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go to our YouTube page. You can get, uh, learn all about that. Andrew Zimmer says, I'll buy one. Please do it, guys. Um, uh, or or we'll figure out how you can buy for Racing for Vets t-shirts. But if you look go look at uh, go, GoFundMe and Racing for Vets, read about it, watch the, watch the podcast. Unbelievable. We want to do more, more stuff for them, but they gave us these t-shirts here when we were the, in Indy. And, man, I'm telling you, this is an amazing program. Uh, do me a favor look at it. Matt Langford said, Burke only 35 points ahead of Morgan, according to my math. Better check that spreadsheet. I think you better check yours. Matt. What's what's say He's, that again? He says, Matt Matt says Burke only thirty five points out of Morgan according to my math. Uh, better check that spreadsheet. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, I don't either. That's fine. We do our own spreadsheet. We're good. So uh, everybody has their own spreadsheet. We'll pick it up, figure it out later on. Let's move yeah, to again, me. again. Everything we do is unofficial. Oh, yeah. You can see EKN is all unofficial. Trust me. We're all unofficial. I'm sure they'll. <laughs> your, dri your driving is unofficial. Scusa will have the uh, the results and the and, and the championship for you sometime in late November. Um, <laughs> That's bad. Maybe the week after. It'll be probably the week after. We try to try to get for you as fast as we can. Uh, Mini Swift brought to you by Leading Edge Motorsports. Um, three driver breakaway, big time for sure. Max Garcia, Parker DeLong, and Salim Hanna. David able to get away. Uh, to the early lead. Um, not surprising. Again, the shake the, the kind of shook out a little bit. As I remember, uh, well, yeah, Garcia, uh, and that was, they actually did it. You know, we talk about it all the time. Hey, just get into a group, pull away, pull and away. drop the guy in the back. Pull, drop, pull, drop. It's the idea. Of, it's the, you know, it's the it's the cycling peloton. There's, you know, 30 guys. You make the breakaway. You drop a couple. It keeps getting smaller. Mm -hmm. Um, eventually, it was Garcia and and uh, DeLong that were able to pull away. Uh, no, three drivers because so. yeah, but but they they started to pull on Hana, but Until then they, the they, final then they, yeah, she, then, or he closed up. Yes, yeah, Salim Hana was there to get back in the fight, which was great. Um, wild finish, and, and this was a thing that that I predicted. How's that? Tell us about that. No, I don't want to tell you. I just yeah, you predict, I, you predict, I, we knew we were going to have great finishes because of this back. The uh, reverse national. You did. Payout. You did. Yeah. So 12, 13, 14. I'm, I was really, I wasn't sure. And I think tomorrow will be even better because it's the last chance. Last yeah, check chance it. Check for it. love. <laughs> <sighs> you realize that that's that's online right now. People, it is. People it's, are going to be able to take that. That's forever. There's a lot of bad things on the internet. That's true. And you try to karaoke is part of it. Uh, <laughs> Garcia led, po pay, uh, you know, paced the whole thing, and and uh, and DeLong. I'll give DeLong a lot of props because he didn't go anywhere, right? He, he wasn't getting aggressive, didn't push, didn't swap, was able to pull away. They they dropped Hanna for a while. Finally, when they started getting back at it, um, it got tight. Uh, DeLong makes the move to the inside of turn number twelve, which it, it, all of a sudden you're crisscrossing, and Hanna was a little bit back. But the minute you make that move to the inside of twelve, they always catch, catches everybody up. 
I honestly thought Selena Hanna was going to get it at one point. So he makes yes. the move to the inside. They come back to the left-hander, and their sock – Hand goes way wide and crosses back, and literally, I almost lost my voice. So I cracked it. Three, they were literally three wide coming in at twelve. And Garcia, oh, 13, I think thirteen. I think Garcia was actually in the grasp while they were going three wide. We couldn't quite see that. It's, it's, a, bad, other it's but, yeah. a bad vantage point yeah. from where we are, but it looked like <laughs> Garcia was in the grass because I think him and Delon pushed out yeah. wide, and Hanna's on the inside. Hanna just drove <laughs> to what would have been the inside of the exit, but yet the outside of the next. Had he had just a little bit more, just. Pitch across and drive could have hold the outside. Drive them all into the grass. Yeah. Uh it was uh it ended up being uh Slim Hunt actually got by Max Garcia, which is not surprising. I think Mark Garcia was in, in the grass. grass. They had to bring it back on. So he yeah. bring it back on then turned right. Uh Del Longo with the win by seven hundredths of a second for, for uh for Parker. We'll go to David's numbers in a second. Parker Long, Salim Hanna, Max Garcia, one, two, three. Caleb Guerrero was in the fight early. Um, but and they get getting like they kind of get shuffled back a bit. He and actually uh, Sebastian Weldon lined up, and, and good on Sebastian because again he started in the back in the back and worked his way back forward. Uh, a good qualifying effort for Sebastian tomorrow. He could go for a race win. I'm gonna say that. Straight, yeah, right? I mean he's been quick yeah. all uh, Friday and today. So yeah, yeah I think really it, it boils it's down qualifying. to qualifying. That's out of top ten every time. So he needs, he needs a good run. He's he needs, yeah. you know what? Probably not with the right guys if he rolls out. And that could be it. I mean, as we see a lot of times in, in all the classes, even X30 Senior, a lot of guys who just get mixed in with the wrong group that right. they're just not able to pull out the, the right amount of speed to be able and to And you count. only get a couple laps. We know it's only seven, seven minutes. Well, it's four, and that's that's the thing about this event. You get seven Sorry. minutes on the racetrack, so you're Mexican. getting maybe four to possibly five if you go straight yeah. out. Right. That's right. That's it, very true. So Gaffera ends up fourth, uh, Weldon in fifth. Gaffera with fast lap of the race. Both those drivers running together. And they were strong. In the end, Parker along with the race win. And what mm -hmm. does that mean in the championship, David? Oh, am I gotta go? I gotta go there now. Go back to okay, Mike. Hold on, Mini. Mini. David. David's ahead of us a little bit by a couple. We may not. We, we may not have it all updated. We're, we're not gonna have it all. No. But, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not clinched. It's not clinched for Parker along. Garcia is still in the hunt. All right. Is he? Is only Garcia in the hunt? Uh, yes, only Garcia. So essentially, right. it's boiled down to the two drivers. I mean, Garcia's still in it, um, but just going to need a lot of help. Um, I can't do math right now. Huh? <laughs> you just can, oh, you can just fill stuff in, right? Yeah, I'm just filling in numbers. So I don't know. I'm loving David. I should do trying to do math right so now. So 255 when you factor in. Is what, what's that mean? He's so that's the gap. So if Garcia were to drop one of his races right now, it's okay. 255. All right. But it's not clinched yet. So it's not clinched, but but it's a large margin. Again, so it's very similar yeah. to the first race. All right, good stuff. Uh, all right, and we don't have notes for everything because I, we got to notes. We got rolling. We're doing other things. We're rocking and rolling. <laughs> what? Just laughing at it. I got a lot of notes, but I was also kind of watching the Indy 500 qualifying. I'll yeah, you were, you were so distracted. I was watching the Indy 500 qualifying because uh, I love it when a guy that we've had in the Scusa Pro Tour, like an Oliver Askew, is out there racing. I think that's absolutely fantastic. It's amazing. It's great stuff. Um, okay, so uh, KA100 Senior, David. I do have notes for that one. Um, and what I liked was the fact that uh, – There's not much you need to write down. What? Just Arius Dukmejian and Luca Mars uh, pulling out. I had them pulling out to it. They were like – they honestly uh, had almost a full second early, six-tenths of a second by lap number six. Um, that was the initial deal. I'm like, okay, these guys are pulling out. This is going to be a good race. Uh, we're going to see a two driver breakaway. They're making this thing happen. Um, there's a guy named I don't know what you say about kid, Bra yeah, kid named uh, Bryson Morris. Bryson. So that's really been kind of the break. You know, anytime you have a, a, a pro tour weekend, there's always kind of a story that we get, we're able to run away with, right? Where somebody has broke through. And when you break through, then, you know, sometimes you break through the race and then the next race, three months down the line, they've got more confidence coming in. This is kind of an opportunity for a kid to come out of the gate. Bryson Morris scoring the X30 uh, junior race win in the summer nationals last year, the first weekend, right? Round five, Saturday. I think he run the Saturday race, I believe. Just going to throw that. That's a good question. I, I think it was I Saturday. I want to say it was Sunday. I think honest. it was Saturday. But do, it do you want me to take a break and find out for you while you talk? <laughs> do, do that. Okay. I think it was Saturday. When Bryson won, it could have been Sunday. The bottom line is he gets in a big role here early last weekend and keeps it going. Much different track configuration. I'm making the, com the, the comparison a little bit to Joseph Newgard because a kid from Tennessee coming up here to run to Newcastle because it's the closest sprint track he can run on. He knows this racetrack. He's strong here. David, you talked about that 
from the get go that uh, um, that uh, that Morris was going to be strong here. You said that, and so uh, to mention and and Morris pull away, uh, Morris starts getting in a role, reels the leaders in, catches them, passes them for the lead. Crazy last lap battle for him to be able to come through, as I remember in my notes. Um, You're right; it was Saturday. Well, look at it. Even Jason Morris says first Saturday. this time. You're right. It was a Saturday. Thanks, Jason. I appreciate it. I found it before he did. Yeah. Well, I'm, per- I'm sure Jason had to find it. I'm sure it was in his head. Uh, just just like all the lost wheels he's had. There you go. I don't know about that. But David does. That's fantastic. Uh, as I remember, uh, as the kind of thing finished off as well, um, Bryson able to pull away to a certain extent, and then Lemke and Dugmedjian and Mars get into a fight over the last couple of corners for the last position. It ends up being a two-second uh, win for Bryson Morris. David will, of course, go to the points and talk about it. Bryson with the fast lap of the race as well. Um, the cool thing for me is that, you know, we I, I was able to do the interview with Bryson, and it's the first time I've, I've done one with him. Uh, even Not even talking like uh, one of our, our podcasts. Just And we had a great interview, and I thought it was fantastic. You got a chance to talk to Bryson, a young kid uh, with a ton of talent right now, and I guarantee you people are going to be looking at this kid right now. Uh David, where is he? K100 seniors. Is it locked? Are we going? To, are we going to the envelope? We're, we're going to the envelope. <laughs> the envelope, please. Uh, yes. Is he got it? Is unofficially, it unofficially, unofficially, he's the champion. Yes, yes unofficially. Damn. Uh, Brandon Lemke is so far sitting second. And again, it's the uh, when you factor in the drop, the uh, the margin is well over the 320 points. So there you go. Unofficially, Bryson Morris is the champion in the K100 senior category. And uh, I know you won't get down to, to senior by the time we're said and done. I got to think he's really close in that category as well. I'm on micro, so talk more. <laughs> That's right. You asked me to do a lot. Hey, there, hey, okay, there was a bunch of penalties, David. <laughs> Jumpstart penalties. Um, I'm not sure what that even means. Oh. Well, again, because we have the jump start. I don't know if you're sure what that means. Who, uh, who, who was it? It was uh, who lost it. What's that? Who lost it because of the jump start penalty at the Super Nationals? Oh, uh, Lorenzo Travis and Utah. There you go. That's right. That was a bullshit call, too. Oh. Did I just say that? You just saw it. Oh, come on. Let's listen. So I can sing can I, and you can swear. Can I say this out there straight up like I've said before? There's no way you should be able to have, have, get a jump start penalty if you're on pole. No, not if you're. I don't care what, if it's carts or cars. <laughs> just, that's my opinion. I really believe that. How does the road to Indy handle that? Uh, we, act, to be honest, uh, yeah, there's been a couple. There's been a driver who's got a jump start penalty before and had to do a drive through. That's. Uh, I know that Oliver Askew got one, and the rule I think Ooh. was jump start. Uh, I, I want to say the rule. The, the rule was actually drive through, but they didn't give him a drive through penalty, which is which favoritism is a mistake there as well. Uh, I don't. I hate a drive through. Come on, let's, you, if you jump start from the pole. Make it two, three seconds, like literally. That's, so a pushback bumper penalty for jumping the start. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, but I don't. I still don't think. Again, I'm a stock car guy. You come out of you. I under, at a stock I car track. Agree. I as you roll into three, there's a line there. That's where you punch you off. Give them, give, them, give the pole center the advantage for winning the pole. Like, it just make doesn't make any sense to me. I it agree. never does. All right. So uh, moving to micro. Um, ah. What you're not? You're not so done yet? I'm almost done with micro. So that, that this is where we're at, right? Micro. So like we just going to blow I through micro. Away. <laughs> we're not going to get it. He I goes. I away. go. Let's get started right now. And I'm uh, and nobody, I'm saying what? And nobody he said, wants to listen. He goes. He goes like, Do we got to start pretty soon? It's like ten o'clock. Um, People on the west coast. It's seven o'clock. There's lots of guys tuning in. This is good. Yeah. This is solid. Um, yeah, I, I don't. Th- I don't think um, Mini's going to be. Uh, micro is going to be uh, ideal. Like it's. Well, you, you keep working because this. I want to know this one. Uh, micro, what do I got here? Top three together at the start, battle for, for uh, battle and turn four for the win. That, yeah, that's what it comes down to. Um, David, you remember the feel of this particular race in the micro swift category? Um, it was in, uh, early on, I thought some guys were moving to the forefront. I'm like, it's gonna be great. There's three driver breakaway, it's a three driver, yeah, the breakaway, but then we go into the end of the race and it's Asher Oshie, uh, Vivek Canton, and and well, Jack Isla. Jack Isla. Yeah. Isla f- led the majority of the race yep. at the point. Uh, Vivek was third because I think he started a little bit uh, further back because he came from last in qualifying because he didn't didn't make a lap because uh, there was an incident through a red flag. Yep. 
he was so yeah. he he was getting uh, checked out by the EMT. Yeah. He was perfectly fine, but um, yeah. So he uh, he came from last to six in the prefinal, and knifed his way up, got up into third, and mm-hmm. was behind Ilif and Oshtin. Osh Osh Oshtin. I, I'm saying Oshtin. I was Oshtin. right. Yes, I wanted I to say know. the name right. Yeah. And uh, basically sat there until about three laps to go, and then made his move in the second, and essentially with. And then with two laps to go, moved into the first. And, but, and then the last lap, it was everybody going after the lead. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I have to go back. I think Oshin was third, right? I think yeah, Vivek. Was and then third. he goes all the way to the lead. Vivek was first yep. going into scoreboard. Yep. I lift. Second. He ran defensive, I think. And I lift tried to do the over under. And Oshin was third. No, I think if I'm not, didn't Oshin go all the way down the inside to take the most? And as they came out of the corner, Oshin goes from third to first, where he gets by both Ilif oh, yes, and right. Vivek. You're right, he did. Comes around the corner, gets out of the corner, and then, of course, Vivek's coming in, and, and uh, Jack's coming in. Well, Jack tries to get the run out of the corner, mm-hmm. as you would. Uh, like, over, under, these guys rolled me, I'm getting the run. And it kind of all, all I know from where we are, because we're looking right at it from the from this, this top of the scale tower, climbing up the back of uh, Vivek, and then the, all of a sudden, it, just, it was one of those deals where it just shot in the air, a full up and over and... Jack ends up upside down underneath the cart. And I guess I think as we know, all of us know when it comes to micro carts, uh, the weight is it's heavy. The carts have a lot of weight on them. It's on top of them. He's not really getting out. He's not really moving very much. Uh, Sierra Ebert, I think, was the one that ran over from the, the, the front of the grid, pulls the cart off. Another scoozer worker is there. And, and Jack actually gets up. She tried to carry him off the track real quickly. He gets up, sits down, and he's he's beat. We talked talk to, to, to his dad tonight, a little bit beaten up. Uh, and I feel super bad for uh, for for Jack because uh, man, there was an opportunity to, to lock it right there, right? He was going to have it done uh, in that in that particular category, which is pretty interesting. Um, in the end, it's a DNF for for him, but he still has really good points. At what two two wins in two seconds? It's it's going to be a I don't great think a great championship day tomorrow. You you think anybody has days. anything for him? I have the numbers. Oshin's got two wins, right? I have the numbers. All right, go. I mean, if you look at total points right now, they're separated by 23 points. So you factor in drops. I think they've all kind of had a bad race with Osteen having a 217 as a drop right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I live with the uh, the 162 today. So that's his drop race today. And then uh, Vivek has a uh, drop race of 240 from round one. So uh, they're essentially, you know, when you factor in the drops, Ilif is up top by about uh, 55 points. Wow. So, right. again, but that's when you factor in the drop. So, okay. There you go. Uh, Canton is right now the points leader overall when you look at total points. Ilif in third, Asher in second. But uh, when you factor in the drops, it basically third to first, second stays the same, and first to third. So, tomorrow's going to be pretty interesting. It's wow. going to be, you know, essentially Vivek and, and, and Osteen has to go, have to go out and get the points that they need. So again, like, like we've said before, if I left gets the pole, there's that 10 points there. Got to start grabbing all the points you can. That thing about Scusa racing is the fact there's so many points, right, David, in that, in that pre-final hundred points to win a pre-final, you've got to get in there and get it all done. So that's mm-hmm. uh, again, so we're, we're in the middle of a fight with the Microsoft category, which is great. I like that. All right. Shifter. Which one do you want to start with? Where are you with the numbers? I'm not ready with the numbers. All right. We're not ready with the numbers whatsoever. You can talk about the race. All right. And actually, I have actually absolutely zero notes in this one here because it was crazy. Well, (laughs) so I'll I'll take a break from the points. Go. So essentially, uh, it was a wild one uh, from the the very beginning to the very end. Well, not to the end, but very beginning with um, uh, A.J. Myers jumped out to the lead, took the whole shot from the pole position. So essentially... The day belonged to AJ Myers. Uh, became the a great first driver to score two wins over this Groundhog Day period, <laughs> and uh, and so he's essentially established himself as the championship leader with two wins. But um, some contact happened uh, in lap two, I believe, between Danny Formal That's and right. Race Liberante. I, I didn't. I had no idea. Like it, literally, where I'm announcing from. We have two windows, and we can't. It's we literally right can't the see corner the corner of the yeah. building. We yeah. can't see it. But um, go. This is interesting. Well, I guess what happened was is Formal and Liberante were racing one another towards I seventy, and at the kink, Formal and them 
got together and essentially Formal did like a 180 and was facing the wrong way. And then Liberante hit him, spun him around. Liberante went off the racetrack, nearly into the pond, up and over, almost into I-70 itself. And Formal spun back around the right direction and continued going. <laughs> and he said he was sideways and backwards at 90 miles an hour and it freaked him the hell out. And he said it was probably the scariest incident he had He said that. Had. I can't believe that. And so I, I'm late with that. You go, it was a scary sound. I'm like, I, you got to fill me in. What happened? Like, I didn't understand it. Yeah. It so I'd love to see some onboard footage of it just to just to make sense of yeah. what exactly transpired. But for some, somehow there was tire marks on Danny's rear bumper. So in all the chaos, Liberante hit his rear bumper and, and whatever. So that kind of sent everybody – Scrambling, shamazzling yeah. around. I had to throw one in. Yeah, there. do it. Too. And they was, they came back towards the scoreboard corner. I believe it was the same lap. And you had uh, Rory Vandersteer, Vandersteer. That's right. Andrew Bedozo and Kyle Wick, and they all kind of take took the shallow line as shifters typically Vinders. do into a <laughs> hairpin. And Bedozo was essentially the the ping pong ball between Rory and Wick. And you said Wick was like going in. And right. I mean, they're all going to the same bottom of, inside of the corner yep. before the, even the apex. So just getting to the bottom and essentially Bedoza went up and over Rory as Wick was pushing him from behind and set Bedoza sideways up and over and backwards off the race. Track. And that's, I saw the end of it. I looked over and, yeah. and, and Andrew's getting the cart back up on the track and get back in it again. So that really shuffled up the lead group and allowed Myers obviously to kind of check out. And, uh, and drive away with a victory for Mal. After he shook all the cobwebs <laughs> off in a couple laps, continued on and, and went on to finish second. But uh, you know, and then Wick ended up finishing in third. And Vanister pushed him the rest of the way. Like Vanister yeah. was there a couple a couple legs off the whole time. But again, there was there was a little bit of controversy. Everybody was expecting some kind of type of call to be called to made to be made, and nothing was was called. So um, I think this category we're going to see a lot of uh, um, a lot of. Uh, Ruling, personal. Oh, personal. Uh, you think the Michael will take it up. amongst themselves? Yeah, settle things their own way. Oh, I like that. All so right. um, we'll see what happens tomorrow. I like that for the next race. But again, it's pro shifters. We kind of respect that. <laughs> let them police. So I mean, let them police themselves. Yeah. I mean, if that's the way they're gonna they're gonna kind of call the race. Mm -hmm. I mean, why not? I like that. And um, you know, obviously, you want to take in safety aspects of first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as everything is is. Safe. Why not? Let him go. Uh, Jake French uh, struggled a little bit with some tires. He didn't have a good feel of the tires that set he had. End up P5. Uh, in the Pro 2 category, I think one of the cool fact and the cool stories we got going on this weekend is the arrival of Josh Pearson. Uh, again, X30 Junior National number three last year. And I don't think that he was, he, it wasn't, he didn't win any races. It was really more of a consistent run. Mm -hmm. uh, Kids grow up in different levels, and whatever and whatever happens, he's jumped behind the wheel of this shifter cart with Mike Rawlson, this cosmic, and he has come alive. Now he's doing some USF 2000 racing, and he's just learning about that, doing a lot of testing. So it's not like he's up there battling it out with those cats. He's running, you know, at the back of the pack and learning USF 2000. Man, jumps into this shifter cart, and let's be honest, uh, he's been doing a lot of racing up at Pat's Acres as well with, with Pat's running with Cowick. Cowick actually told me in a club race they ran. Josh actually passed him in a club race. And listen, you got to give props with that. And, and, and even with Cal saying that, that Josh has done a great job really taking the shift. And that's something that we saw uh, earlier in my career when I was doing the, the shifter cart magazine. Drivers would come out at a, a single speed, the young kids, and get into a shifter cart. And that's all they wanted to do. That's not something that people do anymore. And I think that if more kids did that, they understand how badass it is to run a shifter. There's nothing like it. They don't want, once you get into shifter, you don't want to go back and do anything else. And that happens a lot. Uh, Josh ends up uh, battling it out with a, uh, Jake French. Who's fighting with Jake French for a while there? Like literally was in front of Jake French. Jake finally able to get by. But you're talking about running with a guy with countless national wins. Uh, Jake, of course, one of the best drivers in the country. Uh, Josh ends up with a win by 2.5 seconds in the Pro Shifter 2 category. Uh, Chente Salas on the factory cart was battling out as well. He's having a really, really good run here. Uh, Anthony Freeze, so I'm happy that he gets a, a top three. After the crap that happened to him in the in the in the race on Friday, where he essentially got taken out in the first corner, yeah, just had a yeah. bit of a lot of bad luck uh, on his side. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's a bit uh, 
Again, that's another category that's really close. I got the numbers for pro shifters. So essentially, AJ Myers leading over Rory Vanister by over a hundred points, just over, just under a hundred points. Okay. Um, but again, when you factor in the drops, everything kind of closes up. But you know, really between those two, Formal has still has an outside shot, but needs some help. Okay. Uh, but again, you never know what's going to happen in that that's category. That's very, so. very true. Uh, behind Salas and Freese, the, the podium, Gavin Baylor finishing in fourth, Jason Enrique in fifth. Uh, I didn't see what happened to Baylor Griffin. I'm not sure if you did or not. There was something happened over in the cell tower corner. All I know is that in the, in the chaos following the leaders around, of course, we have four different categories I'm trying to call as they come through and watching the leaders come through. All I know is I looked up, and, and again, Griffin is off the racetrack probably by 30 or 40 feet, and he is pissed. He was livid. He was uh, hands up in the air. I don't know who got into him, but he was not happy at all. If anybody from the Griffin camp is online watching us here, feel free to drop it into the comments. So I'd love to know what happened to Baylor. He was pissed. There's no other about that. Um, in the G1 category, it was Barnes and Rook battling it out again. And I think you said that uh, on lap nine, midway through the race, Rook had a rear gear spin. Sprocket. Yeah, sprocket spun. Uh, so he and Barnes were going back and forth again. Though it was like turn six back. It, it was great racing. I, lo I love watching those guys go at it. Uh, in the G2 category, Nathan Stewart uh, actually lost his streak of top in every session. In qualifying. In qualifying. Yeah. Battling with you – know, he hurt the back a little bit. He's told me on uh, – in the weekend before coming over the ski jump, it's kind of settled in a little bit. Um, but in the main event, something happened. Did you say there was an engine issue? Yeah, engine issue. So uh, they'll obviously uh, look at maybe going to a backup engine or whatever they need to do. But yeah, uh, went uh, was going down the straightaway and decided to uh, not go anymore. Uh, in the end, Justin Peck, the Scusa Winter Series champion, scoring the victory. Ken Schilling in second. Thank you, Stewart. As we said, DNF in third. Three drivers in the class. Uh, X30 Junior, David, uh, I got some. I do have some notes on this one. That's, I think it's my, the last of my notes. Um, what I got out of the gate again was at the start, uh, Alex Stanfield strong, Max Opolsky, Carson Morgan, uh, pulling away together as, as the trio, and they really kind of stretched away uh, a three-second lead by the halfway point. Um, and again, uh, one of the things, that, and I think I, I want to say that I said early on that the second group was being paced by uh, Brent Cruz. And I wanted to say some, something to the effect of, listen, if, if that second group needs some pace, uh, they better follow Brent Cruz because this is the guy that can always get the job done, always seems to reel himself back in. And it, it, he did exactly that, starting to get closer and closer and closer and closer. But in the end, uh, it, it was, and again, I've got Morgan takes the lead with two laps to go, uh, Stanfield back to third, uh, and then takes take second back in, in, in turn number six. And then, of course, we went full block mode. That was one of the things that I thought was crazy uh, in the last couple laps. I was trying to write down the top three. Yeah, I was uh, going to say yeah, there, was, was there, there was a penalty, there right? A penalty. Was it Opolsky? Opolsky DQ. Opolsky was in there. So what is, where did he get a DQ for? I didn't see that. I was going to write down the top three. I want to say it was a three-driver battle. The, the bottom line, It just says technical infraction. But he also had a pushback bumper penalty, so he would have been. If that's a technical pushback. infraction, you can't drop that either. Well, he already had that with the weight. I don't know if it was in this category. Oh, we talked about, about that yesterday. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. um, yeah, he's he's essentially. I think he's essentially out of both points championships. So, okay. So here's here's the here's the one thing I'll I'll throw this out. So so the final lap coming out of turn number uh, eleven. I said this before. 12, 13, 14, Really, really tough to pass. Um, and again, I, I again we're not the officials. We're just throwing out what I saw from where I was. Uh, as they come down the straightaway, uh, Morgan's got the lead. Out of turn number 11, moves to it. There is a, I want to say, what is it, like a, a sealant? There's like a sealant line in the middle of the track, so it's pretty easy to see. It's almost like a painted line in the middle of a road. Mark Carson moves this way, and Carson moves back a bit. Not all the way back, but he moves back a little bit. Uh, I call it a full defense. Like, he goes to the inside, and and I don't, that's, to me, that's the second move. No, that didn't get, I don't think that got called. Uh, but anyways, back for So and then he drives the complete inside of the racetrack coming through, and it was a full block mode. Stanfield's, I, <laughs> Stanfield's all over top of him. Like, literally, I thought it was – it could have been a bump and run anyway. I'm going to give props to Alex because if that's a senior race, someone's getting moved because it was block, 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 block. You're going to get pushed pushed here. I don't know. Again, what you need to do. Yeah, again, 
Pushback well, bumper, push worried about it. You're a junior things. driver, maybe you haven't had a chance to run like that a lot. Um, Alex did a good job, didn't get into the back of Carson, but it was block, 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 block. So, and again, that's that's okay. But it, Alex wasn't he wasn't the place to over under at the right spot. And I think that maybe unless you've done it a couple times there, like I don't know what I would have did either, because it was just <laughs> like you gotta go way wide to make the inside move. And well, Rob, just again, this is the first time we've done the reverse national. That's it. Right? Nobody's used yeah. to fit, they're used to waiting till the I-70 corner, drafting and passing. And then this yeah. is providing a new element, a new challenge for these drivers to learn so how to adapt to. If Stanfield's in that position tomorrow, he's gonna be different i would think i think you'd learn that well, it or it depends on if you learn or not again that just seemed like a big learning could have been could have been a big bump and run morgan with the win anyways and again that like i said the move i saw was obviously not enough for the scusa officials to think it was a block so that's not that's not for me to say i'm just saying what i saw on the racetrack they make the final call uh morgan with the win stanfield second brent cruz 6.5 back able to hold frank frankie mossman did a great job mossman um was there. I really thought that potentially Cruz, nobody else could kind of close up. I'll give props to Apolsky, Morgan, Stanfield. Literally didn't ra didn't race each other for the entire time. Which, yeah, I, nice. which if, they, if they had, those guys were coming forward mm -hmm. in my in my mind. Cruz was leading them. They were coming up. They didn't. They just literally ran together, which I thought was pretty solid. Stanfield led the way the whole time. Maybe that's part of the thing for Stanfield, too. He never really had a chance to be behind anybody because he was getting pushed the entire time. Still no part of it. Uh, Mossman in four spot. Uh, Jack Jeffers in fifth. Uh, anywhere close to the points on this? Or are you still working away at it? I just started it. I was doing. I just finished up the shifter, so now I'm on the X30 here. I don't Sorry. know that. I don't know that we'll need to talk a lot about the points in the next categories. I'll blast through these really quickly. Uh, Nick Tucker with the win in K100 Master. Jonathan Silva in second. Ron Jenkins third. Uh, again, Silva pushed uh, Tucker. They kind of pulled away a little bit. Pushed Tucker the entire time. Actually swapped back and forth. At one point, you know, they 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 changed the lead quite a bit. Um, but then again, in the last lap, um Silva was just Silva was, was there, but just wasn't able to make the pass. Kind of got boxed up coming out of turn 10 mm -hmm. into 11, lost the gap, did, didn't get a good run out of 10, and kind of I think he was thinking about trying to make a move in 11, but didn't do it. Yep. And the indecision, the gap was it was again two Not three there, three tenths of a second. Um Scott Roberts really kind of handled the entire race in X30 master. Miguel Mir was right there. Adam Pettit, uh, again, Sal Sparacio had to initial him and I think uh, Ariel Castro got together and just as a like, green flag, like, right, 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 yeah. right to the turn, turn two, turn three. Uh, Castro's off the racetrack. Uh, Sparacio ends up P4, turned a couple of fast laps. He was purple a couple of times, but was quite a ways back. Uh, Pettit really had, just couldn't challenge him. He was right there. His top three were separated by a second for a lot of the time. And uh, Scott Roberts ended up uh, getting the race win. That's one that's probably done too, I would think. And uh, Roberts with what three wins now? Yes, four, four wins. I think four wins, four, five, and one, yeah, four, and one for one for Adam Pettit. That's probably done as well. Uh, X thirty senior, that's it. Let's wrap it up with X, X thirty senior. Do we have to talk about that? Class? What? Nice. We don't. You don't want to. Just making a joke. It's not very bad. Uh, in the end, uh, that race. Um, a, 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 a couple of things I saw that I thought were really solid. Number one, Ryan Norbert. Um, even though Ryan's uh, not, obviously not going to win the championship this year, uh, not going to get his fifth straight championship because his teammate, uh, Bryson Morris, has been ridiculously good. Um, Norbert was back and just kind of worked his way forward. It was, and I think I mentioned in the broadcast, I haven't seen a Norberg style race out of him yet because normally he qualifies really well, runs up front. You know, we've seen this in many uh, – look back at Utah, Spring Nats last year. Other races where he has just dominated the action. Mm -hmm. Really has flat, run out front, dominated, pulled away. None of that uh, over these, these last two weeks. He's not been that guy. But he's been consistent. I, th I think when you do the results, you'll see that he is third. Uh, I think it was what? Uh, he was like fifth, fourth, third. Se he was second going in. Second in the, in points, the points going into the, into the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Into today. Into today. So there you go. So he, he's been strong, consistent, but hasn't had that dominating stuff that we've seen out of him over the you know the years he won four straight championships. No, that's gone to another driver under the tent. Yeah, but first and foremost, Arias Dugmegia, Christian Brooks, uh, Braden Eves, Luca Mars, those are the guys that were at the front for majority of the race. Uh, the guy we're going to end up talking about, of course, Bryson Morris. He's already got K100 pretty much locked up. 
was kind of hanging back there a little bit and started working his way forward. And it, like I said, it, you, you watch the race up front, Dick Medjian, Christian Brooks, Braden Eves, you know, Brooks, multi-time race winner, Braden Eves, three-time pro tour winner. Both these kids have gone on the, the road to Indy and are going to be stars. Uh, Ari's Dick Medjian trying to make the same move. This is, they're up front. This is good. This is like the three, you know, three big dogs running up front, putting lap down. We're just going to pull away. Uh, Norberg's back scrapping up, elbows up. Jarsa cracks fighting like crazy. Uh, Jonathan Port's putting good lap times down. Hannah Greenmeyer was up there. She gets shuffled back. She fights her way back up to P9. A great run for Hannah coming back to the front. Um, but in the end, uh, it's weird to me because Bryson Morris, again, this is, this is the kid that, that we talked about last year as kind of being, a, I want to say, a surprise winner in next year's junior race. Right, on break, the it's a breakthrough win. Yeah, it's a breakthrough you know. victory, right? You're not, you're not I mean, just, it's what you want to see when when the big show comes to your racetrack. You want to be yeah. able to step up and, and show the pace. Because it's like when the World of Outlaws rolls in, right? Your dirt track and the local shoe grabs a win. Yeah. Or something like that shows really when you well. go to Berlin Raceway, you want a Seneca to win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. I like that. Pull the Berlin in. Uh, Bryson worked his way forward. And it was, for me, it's a thing that it was, it wasn't, there's zero luck, zero wrecking, right? He, this guy's not moving anybody. No. And that's the thing about Newcastle. A clean, a clean part. Super clean. Both KA and in X30. Deep on the brakes of turn number four. Very, that was one thing I noticed a little bit today was how deep he was going into the scoreboard corner. Yeah. And then roll in the center. Like and was kidding. able to roll it through. Yeah. yeah. And then to the inside of turn number six, which we saw, which is again out of four, five kinks, six of the green corner, and guys like up at the curve a little bit. No, that never, never with Bryce just ink and out of the corner. Mm -hmm. Super, super uh, decisive in all his passes. Um, again, this is going to be one of these weekends where we kind of look back and you know, like, this is the arrival of Bryce and Morris. Where does he go from here? What does he do from here? Um, obviously, for him, Newcastle's his racetrack. We're all, he's got to go. He's got to go somewhere next and be a badass, right? He's got to go whatever race, whatever race he goes to next. You want to hope that he comes out and, and does well because uh, obviously here at the home track, he's done a tremendous job, which is which is big for him. But uh, the bottom line is, is Bryson Morris ends up getting the race win, fast lap of the race. And we're trying to win a championship. Uh, you win the race, you steal away the fast lap, ten point bonus as well, big. Uh, One point two seconds the advantage. Uh, Aris Dick Bedjian ends up finishing second. Uh, Ryan Norberg, uh, if he's going to go out as a four-time champion, he can't do it. He's going to end up with national number two, I would think, probably the way he's run. The consistency that he has shown has been amazing. But I, Christian Brooks, <laughs> I talked to Christian, was either before or after the pre, I think it was before the pre-final, he's like, I just cannot buy a break. Uh, and for him to be able uh, to, of course, then come back, yeah, he was up front, mm -hmm. which was great. He ends up finishing P4. Luca Mars in, in – uh, in, in fifth, it's almost like Luca Mars in this particular category, even in K100, kind of getting uh, a little overshadowed by by Bryson because Luca's a kid that we've watched. Is he, has he not been the – do you put him as the number one or two junior over the last five years or three years? Where do you put him? Well, he was – it's not been that long. I think two years that he was in junior. Yeah, so where do you put him? Was, so, he the best, was he the best junior? Um, because he kind of had that transition, I think, where he was cadet one race and then moved up to junior the next. So, Straight to shifter. Uh, I know. No, no, no. But, uh, but who, who are the top juniors you've seen? Him? Tommy Zillich? Well, the top rookies that are seniors right now yeah. would be Luca Mars and Bryson and Morris, Morris, obviously. Yeah. Um, Duke Medjian is the second year. He's, mm -hmm. he's he's not having a sophomore slump. That's, no, that's, that's one thing to talk about. We haven't I mean, talked about that, actually. Uh, you know, typically sometimes drivers do kind of not – perform well in their second year as a senior driver or excel. And he, I think he's really excelling, you know, obviously been on top of the podium um, during this groundhog event. And uh, I think he's, uh, he, he, again, for him, I think nothing but confidence. Yeah. Again, if you look at nothing. drivers 18 and under, you got Morris, Dugmedjian, uh, Mars, I think ports as well. He's a, oh, I think ports. he's, he's a, now? uh, no, I think he's this is this is his first senior year as well too. What? If I recall, I think what's what's the brother's name? Ed. Edward. Yeah, I think he's older. Oh my God, that's right. right. Edward's the older brother. So Jonathan, Jonathan is younger. the younger one. He could be fifteen. So he could be. So again, you got a lot of young Damn. young talent. Of Hannah Greenmeyer just turned eighteen. Yeah. yeah. So Jace Denmark Gessel, uh, kind of just at that eighteen age. Zach Holds is getting old though. Tyner's another one too. Zach Holds. Old, old. He's old. I, I, it was good to see him in the top ten <laughs> because was. he's. He's like, you know, he came out of retirement. He's like the old guy out there. 
Yeah. You know, exactly. him, and, him and Lemke are like old guys. old guys. And we remember them as cadet drivers. Exactly right. right. Yeah. So yeah. even Agreed. even Charger Crack, mm-hmm. right? they're, they're the old guys. And Norberg now, I think, is, is kind of transitioned into the old guy now. Uh, Here, have, we, have we not been able to I, I just want to throw this out there so it gets into the families. We, we can talk about it. There's uh, another brother. We talk about all the brothers that keep making mistakes now, right? The Weinbergs. What, which one? Cameron? <laughs> or Car- I kept making yeah, we, mistakes we, we, on them. We got the Moss brothers that we keep mixing up. We got the Iliff brothers. Hold on. In senior, there's George McGinnis and Robert McGinnis. Yeah. George, obviously, the more talented driver. <laughs> Robert, of course, a winner in Indy Lights. I think, I think George may be the better McGinnis. I'm just going to throw it out there. <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let you handle that. Throw that out there, Georgie. You're the man, bro. Um, yeah, George ended up finishing in the 15th spot today. Uh, all in all, though, David, I think a pretty good uh, day of competition. Uh, a couple of re- we get two red flags or just the one? Two red flags. Well, we had the one in qualifying, but no major injuries, which is great. It wasn't like a big nuts flipped up deal. No. Um, hey, listen. Here's the deal. I'll throw a, 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 that Lenford, that again. Edward Senior, John, no. no. Senior. New to senior. Yeah. All right. So yeah, uh, I was right. Here's one. Jorge Jaramillo, great coverage. How about this three race weekend format? I don't um, think anybody likes it. I hate it. Uh, I don't listen. Screws up. Kudos. Get the pro tour done. We did this in one of the earlier broadcasts. David and I keep talking about the fact that I, I'm a bit we're a bigger fan of the one race weekend deal. I get it. Um the two race weekend. If you have a bad day, you get come back the next day. People are happy. You get a chance to come back. Um, you see that warm and fuzzy, warm feeling. and fuzzy feeling. But you and I are all about, as it's been in the past, one race winner. When we do coverage, it's one winner. Uh, did you, hey, did you win this weekend? Yeah, I won the first race. No, I'm the winner. You're the winner on a weekend, right? Um, even IndyCar doing double headers right now. Uh, it's and, tough. Yeah, with the, with the, with but, the, with the COVID rescheduling. Yeah, we, what are your have, thoughts, folks? You, you, you have to adapt to what what has been presented to you. You know, similar to track changes or mm-hmm. or temporary circuits. You know, you gotta you kind of gotta adapt. And obviously, Supercars USA has been able to adapt to this year's season. And and it's good that we're getting all six rounds in. Yep. Um, so we can look back and say, you know, as you keep talking about, well, this is the first day of the summer nats. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So it's, it's Friday and Saturday were the winter nets of, of last, last week, Sunday, Sunday of last week, and, and Friday, Friday this week, spring nets. Spring nets. We're into the summer nets now. So we can look at it that way, but you know, again, it's still at the same racetrack. So that that is the big difference. So yeah. you know, you talk about the NBA championships that's going on, and NHL even, and and, and baseball having a, a reduced schedule, yep, yep. you know, people are talking about asterisks, you know, on the, on these championships. I mean, you can do that. You can say that. I mean, but it's still, you had to be good over six rounds of racing. So it's, it's a championship, but again, it's, it's a unique championship. This is again, time. This is a, a, a unique time for all of us and, and we've had to adapt and, and luckily we're able to race. I mean, that's, yep. That's the number one thing is we're able to race. Yeah. Here, here's Josh for out here. Josh for saying uh, one winner, you race all weekend to get a better starting spot for the main. And that's, again, that's, we had that in the past, right, David, where you would qualify, we had a couple of heat races, you keep moving your way forward, and it ends up being one winner at the end, which I think is always uh, uh, always a good thing. I, I like the fact that you, you push hard, and in, in the end, you're a winner or you're a loser, your first, or your first loser, second loser, third loser, whatever it may be, man. It's, it's, it's you're either good or you're not. And and that's the the uh, the program for sure is to be able to, to be able to get out there learn how to race for, for a win, and then not make mistakes because that's, again, we see this all the time, right? I don't care if it's a Friday race or Saturday race or Sunday race, drivers not thinking long, not thinking in the long term of what you're going to do for the main event. That happens all the time. Uh, again, folks, uh, if you have any other questions, we'd be happy to answer them right now. Throw us out a couple of questions here. We're actually, we're right at, we are right at one hour right there. Man, longer than I thought it was going to be. Well, I stalled you. You did, you did great. Did you get David was uh, still filling in? I'm uh, on race group seven, so uh, yeah, you're not good. quite. You're, but, do, you're doing good, buddy. Yeah. I appreciate it. This is and that this is what happens in card news, folks. So we left here at eight o'clock this morning. Got to the racetrack. We were on the mic at nine. David was starting to post at nine o'clock in the morning. It's now eleven o'clock, so we're essentially uh, fourteen hours into this deal. We had a quick dinner at Los Amigos. It was delicious. Uh, we enjoyed ourselves, uh, but now we're back wrapping things up. Dave's got a report still to write. Um, just, just it in, David. I mean, I, I mean, 
just like you're announcing I'll phone it in. <laughs> wow. Yeah. The report's still to write, uh, and he's doing and doing the points right now to make sure that we're able to tell you guys what we think are going to be the results. That's all because of you. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, that's true. We do it for you guys. If it wasn't, if it, if you guys said we don't give a shit about uh, <laughs> about the points, David wouldn't do it. I've gotten five texts about it already. <laughs> That's not surprising. Uh, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We do appreciate it. We're waiting for just other guys saying stuff. Let's just throw a couple of deals in here. Oh, Josh, wait, wait. Josh says, what about people who get pole, win all heats, blow a chain in the pre-final? Do you start for the mainer or do the average? Now, that's an interesting thing. If you have all the heats, you can average it for the deal. I like that. Uh, Louis Pagano throwing out the A versus B versus C versus D. I love the Supernats when we do it that way. I think uh, that's something that's been run on the, on the world stage. How many times, David Coates? What do you think about points? Oh, we, we did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, yeah, it, listen, there's lots of different ways to like again. Talk. Friday, Saturday, Sunday means everybody gets a chance to win. I'm not a big fan of everybody winning races. I, I, I seriously, I just. If you have a bad day, you gotta have a bad day. People, I think people in the sport a lot of times get mad that when they have a bad day, they think it's the worst thing in the world. And I think for for kids that have bad days, that's a great thing. You have a bad day; it's horrible. Learn from it. Come back to the next race. That's the thing. Uh, when a family has a bad day, when a father and a son, or a father and a daughter, or a mother and a son, put it together what you want. When you guys have bad days, you guys get to work together to get better, and that's the beauty of the sport. Is the fact it's a family sport. So if you're having an issue together, you're struggling. And you sit down and talk to your child, and you're able to get better. It doesn't happen in soccer. It doesn't happen in baseball. This is kind of a family sport where you're able to get better and better. And, and who, talk, who talk do to the it. old guys talk to? You, me and you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel sorry for them. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We do appreciate it. We're back again for round number six tomorrow, Championship Sunday at the Supercars USA Pro Tour. It is Crown Hog Day again. We'll wake up again at seven o'clock in the morning. We'll hear. Uh, I think it's Sunny Chair is the song, right? Put your little hand in mine. That's a song, by the way, David. I was singing Chicago earlier. That's you, you did on the way in. You were singing Chicago. We're back tomorrow. Groundhog Day. One more day at Newcastle Motorsports Park. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, again, 1053. We're just having a good time here. We hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I'm, yeah, so I, I got through half a beer. <laughs> that was an well, hour. Because I made you talk. They might get paid to talk. That's what I'm here for. You just do your work. I'll keep talking. I'll carry us here right now. Should we, should we go back and have a look at me and you, me beating you one more time? Oh, no, no. No? Nobody wants to see that, Rob. Hashtag beat David Cole. Thanks, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Do appreciate it.